What do we have here? I wonder what do we have here. Hey everybody, so what I have here is two super micro servers. One is um, one has 8 core 16 threads and that's the one I'm going to be upgrading today and the other one is 6 core 12 threads. Well, due to FreeNAS Coral coming out just yesterday, I decided to actually update this server because I have two of these 10 terabyte drives which I'm going to put inside that server and on top of that I'm going to load up the FreeNAS 10 and set it up and try to set up virtual machines and use it as a hyper converged hypervisor instead of VMware that I've been running on it so far. So without further ado, I'm going to hook it up to my station over here and shut it down first. I've already made backups and copies of all my VMs just in case if I decide to uh, go back and let's do it. So the next thing I'll do is I'll log in into the uh, VMware, I'll log into the VMware server and shut it down. I'm really interested in this hyper-converged system that FreeNAS is offering. Um, there are a lot of advantages with going with uh, FreeNAS, but again, industry standard VMware, you can't go wrong with that either, or Hyper-V. Either of those can serve you well, but if you'd like to experiment, why not? Okay, so let's pop this open and see what we already have inside. So what I have here is Super Micro Super Server, as they like to call them. And there's a Xeon D1540 underneath this shroud. And we have 64 gigs of DDR4 memory right here. There's a one terabyte M.2. You can't see it, but it's right there. We're going to be taking this out, which is four terabyte mechanical drive, and this 500 gig Samsung uh, solid state drive. And there we have it everybody, we have two 10 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolves 
and we have one terabyte of uh, M.2 on the board. Uh, this should be enough. I decided as not to put this in because if I use this high speed one terabyte for uh, VMs, for whatever fun stuff I want to do, there'll be enough. And this, on the other hand, should provide more than adequate amount of storage for me. Okay, so I put the server back in the rack and with this platform I only need power to the server, IPMI connected to my network and I can actually boot, power it on remotely through IPMI boot into the server remotely, mount the image remotely, and install FreeNAS on this USB all remotely because of the IPMI. IPMI is really one of those enterprise features that once you have it, you never want to go back. So from here on out, we will go back to my a main computer and we will continue from there. Okay, I've logged in to the Supermicro. IKVM and I've mounted remotely a FreeNAS image and you can see it shows up when I went to the boot disk as a virtual CD-ROM uh, YSOJ so I'm going to navigate to that and start the FreeNAS installation it really is straightforward after you access the installer you just follow the uh, on-screen instructions for FreeNAS I've sped this up a bit, well, a bit might be an understatement, but in interest of serving, of saving time, I've sped it quite a bit. So, as you can see, I'm going to uh, highlight uh, Sandy's Cruiser, which is the last one, and hit OK, and go to the prompts. Uh, the longest part is um, after you confirm your password that you're going to be using. This password is very important for logging in the first time as, as root user. So whatever you type here, remember it. And uh, your BIOS option, and that's really it. After that, it's just uh, reboot at the end. The installer will go through its paces, and uh, it's going to say it's finished. So hit OK. You need to reboot. Uh, to bring up the FreeNAS for the first time. And that's really it for building the server. Now I hope you enjoyed the video. Please stay tuned for the second part is when I dig into the FreeNAS itself. So see you soon. Oh shit.